Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first of this evening's exciting performances at the Vale of Glamorgan Festival. Um, we're going to hear in this first concert the premiere of Helen Wood's Our House is on Fire from the words of Greta Thunberg, performed by soprano Jennifer Walker and pianist Stephen Wood. Clearly, you can hear from the title that the piece directly relates to the theme of this year's festival, that of the natural world and our sense of place within it. So I'm delighted to introduce Helen to you all and to you all to Helen. Helen is a composer, a music animateur, musical director and performer. I know her most recently from her wonderful work with Teak Health in establishing our Africa project alongside Timmy Williams and others, working primarily with musicians from local communities around the Wales Millennium Centre. But I know she has done huge amounts beside this, not least with the Vale of Glamorgan Festival, and many of you here will have seen and heard her amazing work over the years. Um, Helen, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Could you tell us uh, a little bit about the kinds of work you do and what motivates you as a composer? Um, so works-wise, that there are lots of motivations, sometimes entertaining small children um, and, and doing that through ridiculous songs. Um, but it... Um, and opera for children and um, sometimes just... Oh, we need a piece of music for this. Can you do it? Yeah, go on then. Um, so, yeah, lots of different sort of stimulus for, th for different things. Um, heads all over the place today. I'm so sorry. Um, but the, the, I, I think for this one in particular, um, the, the first time that I had an idea for using Greta Thunberg's words was actually um, we were rehearsing the tiddly prom and that's all wonderful and lovely and for very small people and whoops banana and very funny and, and very silly. Mm. Um, and we were rehearsing and then suddenly from outside you could hear just so much noise from so many children. And, um, and it was one of the Climate Fridays and they were just all marching past St. David's Hall to march down to the bay. Wow. And it was such a strong kind of, yeah, I'm doing songs about bananas and they're shouting about their planet and what that means for them. Mm. So when it was kind of to choose a text that would be then heard by children, I wanted it to be something that actually those children had already spoken out and said, this is what they care about. So rather than go, no, 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 you should care about fairies. Yeah. Um, uh, most children don't care about fairies. Um, but <laughs> that was just the first thing that came into my head. Um, <laughs> but that, that actually then that helps to keep that conversation going, which, which we should all be having. So, Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's been... Um, it was an incredible moment that, that at, um, when Greta Thunberg delivered the speech where she berates the United Nations for their inaction when our house is on fire. Yeah. And it's a moment that is continually replicated, it seems to me, that, you know, with Greta Thunberg being this one person, a very young person, who's literally come from nowhere and made such a difference. How does that, um, how does that mesh with the kind of activism and music making that you've been making up to this point? I think... I feel it's quite a humbling thing because mm -hmm. it's um, because so much of my work is about enjoying music and in the moment yeah. that actually it's like a oh no actually this is it's time to be a bit more serious and it, it's you know if there's a way of creating something that keeps that discussion going then it's my little bit that I can do through my music that helps. Um, sort of keep that conversation going with children and getting them more involved rather than it being, yeah, there's this, this, this one girl who's doing that, you know, yeah. it, that, that we all need to be caring about it. Yeah. Although I, I suspect your 
quite modest when you're talking about your other workers not being serious, because um, I believe that you ha actually have a profound impact on the people that you work with. And I'm thinking, yes, of the children. But you've done all sorts of work with adults as well, haven't you? Yes. Um, yeah. Th uh, yeah, quite a lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a great self-publicist. No. Um, I'm not sure there are many composers that are, but the ones that are, you will have heard of. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of stands to reason, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, yeah I mean, I, I, I want any of the work that I do to mean something. Mm. And... Um, and talking to, to the lovely composers over there yesterday about actually I want all of the work that I do to have an integrity to it. Mm. Um, so doing a little project where I've written some songs with, with a group of five children and there was an eight-year-old girl who'd written as though she was Pamina and written to her mother and having an opera singer sing it as though she was singing it the Albert Hall at the proms, oh. and that there is a so there is still that integrity. So yeah, yeah, I was a little flippant to begin with, which is that's my style. <laughs> um, but it's yeah, there is uh, there is an integrity to it. Absolutely, um, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it seems to me that, that it's almost impossible um, to be a musician, um, especially a, a sort of a creative practitioner these days. Um, and not be an activist in the sense that, you know, we're watching what's happening with music education and the difficulties there and the, you know, inequalities having an impact on people's ability to afford music lessons outside school, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it, it, it almost seems to me to be perfectly natural that activism and music should go hand in hand. Although, for some people, it does seem to be a matter of questioning. They, they sometimes wonder how it is that activism in the broader social sense can mesh with being a, a, a composer. Yeah, I, th I think because, um, ultimately, as a, as a composer, you're very, very few people can exist without there being a certain amount of needing to make a living yeah. and so so it's kind of you are looking at other things and other areas other than just a difference that you can make right yeah. you know but it's um and yeah i mean i think there are there are problems particularly within music music education of of it being kept as a priority i think that's easier in wales than it is in england mm. um mm. Um, so glad that I'm in Wales, um, yeah. but um, yeah, I think I think that is a an ongoing concern, and I think that um, I think that there needs to be a change of of kind of mindset mm -hmm. when it comes to what doing music within education does to the brain, does to your mm -hmm. creativity, that you know, jobs aren't being created in the same way as they were. So people need to be able to be creative to think outside the box in order to do any kind of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, children being educated now are being educated for jobs that we can't imagine yet. No. And maybe there's something about how at this moment of time where we're looking at economic crisis, maybe there's something about creative thinking being needed to unpick some of the worst excesses of the kind of approach that we've seen that's got us into this mess. Absolutely. But we're getting very profound now, aren't we? Well, yeah. we've, it's all gone quite serious. I thought we were just going to talk about how the planet's doomed. <laughs> But it, it, it is, I mean, it's, um, it's an extraordinary moment. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking as well of um, a, a composer I know called Emily Doolittle, who describes herself as a zoo musicologist. And um, she writes a lot of music 
um, utilizing natural sounds, the sounds of animals, birds, etc. Because for her, with um, sort of mass extinctions that are taking place, it's important that those those animal voices, those natural sounds, are are preserved, are heard, and. Um, I, it, it got me wondering about your approach to music and sound, whether, I mean, obviously, you're, we're going to hear how you're using Greta Thunberg's words this evening, but has that need for activism affected the way that you hear sounds and the, and the kind of projects that you take on and the kind of sounds that you use in your projects? I mean, I just, uh, it's an open question, I don't know. It, it was an open and massive question. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I mean, every, every project is kind of uh, looking for as many different angles into it so that, that it's, it stays fresh and it stays exciting as well yeah. for me to write as well as for performers. And, um, but it, I think... The, the kind of the work that I, I do it does it has to mean something a little bit rather mm. than it be, you know, um, which is why in a typical week I'll be working with older people with Parkinson's at the same time as working in schools, creating music. It, it's it's yeah. a very varied kind of pot of things. Right. Um, yeah. Um, and I don't think that's just because I have a low boredom threshold and need to do lots of different things. Um, yeah. I, I enjoy doing lots of different things. Yeah. Um, I enjoy that Saturday I was in Hackney with teenagers and we were discussing whether women's rights would have um, progressed quicker had Boudicca not died. Ooh. So, right. you know, it's... Yeah. But it... <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, which was not where I thought my Saturday morning was going to go. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah, being mindful that actually, yes, we were going to write an opera, but it was like, actually, there are questions that they have about the world and things that you're, you're doing so much more than going, and how would you like to sing this? Yeah. Um, there is a lot yeah. more going on and that you want to sort of, draw into that as well right so so the so the conversation all pulls into the project all pulls into the music so it becomes incredibly collaborative yes and respon and responsive yeah. in that way mm. um i was just wondering the piece that we're going to hear tonight um i know that there is a massive um schools project yes how does the piece we're here we're going to hear relate to the project that you're going to be doing with the schools so um, it hugely does, but the, the final movement when we do it in schools will be, they'll be singing along right. with, as a call and response sort of protest song. Right. Um, and I'm going to be leaving them a work pack for them to write their own protest songs. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the, that's going to be the activity afterwards. Um, I just felt that you probably didn't want a call and response <laughs> uh, this evening. <laughs> um, uh, if I went, okay, come on, guys. Um, so, so for this version, it's, it's very much the, in the final um, movement is a call and response between singer and piano. Right. So just relax. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but there was a slightly um, mindful of when you're taking a project into a school and taking a piece in to share with children that it's like a, oh, it's great if they're in different times. Right. Um, because that already gives you an opener. But right. actually, I already knew that I wanted the, the first movement to be in five and, and for it to, to decrease um, in both the time signature and also the length of each movement. So if the first movement seems really long, don't worry, they get shorter <laughs> um, with each movement, which was kind of to represent that running out of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah. like that to be reflected when we take it into schools. Mm -hmm. um, bless the children that we're going to be taking it to. They don't get Stephen Wood. Right. They get me. And, but, and I'll have learned to play it by the time <laughs> we go into the schools. But um, 
a lot of it will be the balance between showing them the music and, and get them getting a grasp of music writing and listening to music, but balancing that with also the content right. of, of the, what the message is behind it. Right. Um, but yes, but we've got, I think it's 14 schools lined up to go to. Gosh, um, great. And they'll be done sort of assembly style. So we could be looking at about a thousand children. Goodness. Sitting through it. So I don't mean sitting through it. That's the <laughs> <laughs> singing along. Well, that, that sounds absolutely amazing. And um, this is supposed to be a very short interview because um, we've got two musicians out there waiting to come on. So I won't throw it open to questions if that's all right at this point. But what I do say is that um, we're going to have a, a little bit of opportunity afterwards, um, I think, to, to meet with Helen if you're, if you're still here with us at the end. And um, <laughs> so I'd encourage anyone who, who'd, who'd like to ask Helen some questions to to besiege her at that point, if that's all right. But um, I'd like you to join me in wishing Helen all the very best for tonight's performance and the ongoing project. Thank you, Helen. Pleasure. Thank you.
Thank you.